I'm Mark Van Gessel, Extension Weed Specialist at the University of Delaware and a member of the GROW Network. I want to talk about identifying grasses commonly found in field crops in this region. It can be difficult to identify grasses before their seed heads emerge, but knowing what characteristics to look for and what may set one apart from another is a great start. Feeling comfortable knowing a few species will be helpful when you start to look at some unknown species and trying to identify them. Now, grasses are much easier to identify once their seed heads emerge, but once the seed heads emerge, it's well after the time that they should be controlled. So we need to look at weeds while they're in this small vegetative stage for identification purposes. So the structures we're looking at, these vegetative structures, um, include the leaf blade, um, and not just one surface, but both the upper and the lower surface of a leaf blade. We'll often look at characteristics for the leaf sheath, and that's the portion of the leaf as it comes down and starts to wrap around the stem. It's called the leaf sheath. We want to look in the collar region, and this is that portion of the leaf uh, where it comes down and starts to wrap around the stem. In that collar region, we find characteristics such as a ligule, which like this one here is membranous, or it could be hairy. We also will look for oracles, which are finger-like projections that wrap around the stem. And we'll look for hairs, uh, hairs on the leaf uh, or and or on the stems. And not only on a leaf structure, but whether it's on the upper or lower leaf structure. The best way to look for hairs on the leaf or the stem is to hold that plant up to a light source. Uh, if you're outside, up to the sky, or inside, looking at a light. And in the case of a leaf, wrapping that leaf over your finger and looking closely for those hairs. And be sure to look, again, for both the upper and the lower leaf surface. We'll also be looking at the growth structure of the plant whether it's upright, like we see here in this, this photograph, or prostrate, uh, meaning something that's growing very flat to the ground, or if it may have a decumbent uh, growth habit. And decumbent meaning that initially it grows very low to the ground, but then as the stems expand, the tips of the stems start to grow upright. And grasses that grow in this type of growth habit tend to look quite clumpy uh, when they're seen from afar. So you might be asking yourself, why is it important to identify grasses while they're small? So even using a broad spectrum herbicide like glyphosate, um, it's important to know what species you're dealing with because not all grass species are equally susceptible to glyphosate. Here we have seedling Johnson grass. And at normal use rates, glyphosate will control seedling Johnson grass up to 18 inches tall. Here we've got two other species, fall panicum and barnyard grass. Maximum height for effective control with normal use rates of glyphosate is six inches. So while this fall panicum, large enough to be controlled with normal use rates of glyphosate, this barnyard grass is beyond uh, height for effective control. To be able to identify species at early vegetative stage is important for products like glyphosate as well. So let's start looking at some of the common summer annual grasses found in field crops in this mid-Atlantic region. First one is goosegrass. Goosegrass has a prostrate growth habit. Even when it's quite small, it grows very flat to the ground. Overall, the plant has a very waxy appearance to it, and the base of the stem is often white or almost silverish looking. It has a flat stem, and again, how do we know that, or how can we tell that? If you roll it in your fingers, you can feel those edges. Hold it up to a light source, you're going to see very few hairs, and the hairs are, are kind of scattered around, so very sparse, sparsely hairy. The ligule is membranous, um, quite uneven, and the, t the top of the ligule may be slightly fringed. Barnyard grass is an upright growing plant, uh, very erect even as a seedling. It has no hairs on either side of the leaf, and the stems often are round as very small seedlings, but as the plant starts to get 
larger, it often will develop more flattened stems. One of the things that sets barnyard grass apart is what it doesn't have, and that is no legule. Uh, it's very prominent collar region is light green. And if you pull the leaf back, you'll see that there is no ligule on the barnyard grass. Next one is large crabgrass. Crabgrass, as you can see with some of the light behind the picture, you see it has uh, some very prominent hairs on the stem. As a very young plant, uh, the cotyledons in the first leaves tend to be short and wide, particularly compared to the other common species in this area. It has um, often a prostrate growth habit. Um, when it's grown in competition with other plants, it may grow more upright though. It's got stiff hairs on the upper and lower leaf surface and very prominent hairs on the stems as well. Those hairs are growing at almost a 90 degree angle from the stem. It has a very tall membranous ligule you pull away that leaf just a little bit, and you can quite easily see that ligule um, and its membranous with the large crabgrass. Giant foxtail is another upright growing grass. It has hairs on the upper side of the leaf, not on the lower side, only on the upper side. The hairs tend to be relatively short. This certainly is one that's easier to see those hairs when you hold the leaf up to a light source and look for the short, dense hairs. Giant foxtail has a relatively tall, hairy ligule. Next grass to talk about is fall panicum. Fall panicum is another upright grass. It has long, narrow leaves. And even the second or third leaf, like this little seedling here, uh, the leaves will tend to droop on it. Fall panicum has hairs on the underside of the leaf when it's very small. Um, you can see that with the light shining underneath this leaf here. You can see those, those short hairs. As the plant gets larger, and we're talking as, as little as four or five leaves, it loses those hairs. You're not going to see hairs on taller um, fall panicum plants. The fall panicum has a hairy ligule. As those plants get larger, they develop a distinctive mid-vein, pretty prominent, uh, light color, and, and quite deep. Fall panicum's got a round stem, and often as a seedling, there'll be a, like a tint of red at the base of the stem. Seedling Johnson grass, often confused with fall panicum for it has many of the same characteristics. It's upright, relatively long, narrow leaves that tend to droop over. Has very few hairs on the upper and the lower um, leaf surface. Has a round stem and the base of the stem can also be reddish. And Johnson grass has a membranous ligule. One of the ways to help separate Johnson grass when it's a seedling is to dig it up and look for the seeds. Uh, oftentimes that seed will be still attached to the root system and Johnson grass has a very large dark to black oblong seed. And so if you dig carefully dig it up, shake or rinse uh, the soil off the roots, you'll often see that seed still attached to the the root system. As I mentioned, Johnson grass is similar in appearance to fall panicum. Fall panicum is a very small seed and it's very difficult to find that seed, whereas the Johnson grass is quite, quite prominent as we see here. Now in this area, Johnson grass is primarily coming from seed, but in many parts of the United States it's it will come also from rhizomes. And plants that are originating from rhizomes are more robust, larger plants. And you can dig up the plant and you can find those rhizomes like we see here in the lower right, even on relatively short Johnson grass plants that have originated from rhizomes. Texas panicum is a relatively large, robust grass. Texas panicum has that prostrate growth habit the first leaves 
are often wider than most other grasses um, in this area, which really one of the characteristics that art. It's got a membranous ligule that uh, is fringed at the top with hairs. But one of the things that really sets Texas Panicum apart from the other species in this area is that it has dense hairs on both the upper and the lower sur leaf surface. These hairs are, are quite dense, almost velvety feeling, and it's one you can feel by just lightly running your fingers over the, the leaf blade. And again, holding it up to a light source, you can see those, those hairs uh, on that upper as well as lower leaf surface. In addition to the leaves, the stems are often covered with dense hairs on Texas Panico. Broadleaf signal grass. Compared to a number of the species we've talked about, broadleaf signal grass has relatively short, wide leaves. Even on seedlings, you will often find the leaf edges differ from one side to the other. One edge might be straight, while the second uh, edge is crinkled like we see here. Broadleaf signal grass will have hairs on the leaf sheath. However, there are no hairs on the leaf surfaces, neither the upper or the lower leaf surface. Um, they'll be hairless. The ligule is a narrow membrane, often fringed with hairs. And if you look closely in that collar region, along the margin or the edge of the leaf, you'll see a red tinge, something that's quite unique with broadleaf signal grass. So I hope that this video has been useful in identifying some of the common summer annual grasses found in field crops, and that discussing these terms help you feel more confident in identifying unknown grasses in the future.